It's a very interesting bottle. It's been out there since the 1970s. Under Freiberg's careful direction involving social workers, psychologists, pediatricians, nurses, psychiatrists, an array of people who were willing to work side by side on behalf of the babies to create a service that would offer preventive intervention and treatment services as warranted on behalf of babies, toddlers, families, and relationships. It was really quite extraordinary in the 70s. It's taken us a long time to gain ground and support for this particular perspective. Understanding that the best beginning for a baby takes place within the context of nurturing relationships, at least one. Selma Freiberg and her team place that relationship between parent and infant at the center of the work of infant mental health. Infant provided the focus on very young children, at that time under three years of age. Mental was broadly defined to include social, emotional, and cognitive domains. And health emphasized the well-being of babies and toddlers, as well as their parents. So no longer do we really need to hold in mind the picture of the baby lying on a couch with the psychiatrist standing behind that baby, uh, looking kind of quizzical or amusing about the problem. Infant mental health is, may conjure up that image, but it is so not that at all. It is about relationships, the developmental needs of babies, and the relational needs of parents and children together. The legacy that Selma Freiberg and her colleagues left us includes a powerful approach to the social and emotional health of young children and families. A brief description of service components might be useful here. They were integral to the early practice of infant mental health and now continue to provide a cornerstone for our work today. Sometimes two, three, or all of the components are appropriate for a given visit or a family. The fifth, reflective supervision, is essential to all of our work with families. So let's begin with emotional support. Easily de defined as the compassion offered to a parent who faces an immediate crisis, perhaps a worrisome pregnancy, or a baby who's been born too soon, is in N the NIC unit. Alone or without em out emotional reinforcement from family, a parent must have somebody who is available, who listens carefully, and responds to the many feelings that threaten to overwhelm or confuse parents in the beginning or as they're raising a baby. Concrete resources are also important. This refers to the meeting of basic needs for food, clothing, medical care, shelter, and protection. We all need that. <laughs> How could you take care of a baby if you didn't have enough food yourself or to feed the baby? So it becomes the specialist's responsibility to help families secure these things so that they will be able to begin to focus their attention, their affection on their child and certainly to ease the burdens that are very clear when one has no place to live and very few resources. Developmental guidance is another core that's very important to infant mental health practice. It's the shared understanding about very young child's development and specific needs for care. Many people have never taken care of a baby before or raised a toddler, so that the practitioner and the parent need to carefully 
observe and identify strengths and also give voice to concerns, reaching an understanding of the uniqueness of each child and finding a common language to describe together what they see. The infant mental health specialists can bring toys, they can suggest activities, they can sit beside parents as parents are invited to interact and come to fall in love with their child. Seems surprising that we would have to really guide people to play with their babies, talk to their babies, sing or read, but we do. And especially the more vulnerable families may never have had these experiences. And so developmental guidance becomes a very important part of infant mental health. The fourth, infant parent psychotherapy, offers a parent the opportunity to explore what he or she is thinking about or feeling in the presence of their very new baby or their growing baby or their toddler. In the intimacy of the home or in a clinic setting, the parent may share stories of past experiences, significant relationships, that didn't go so well, perhaps. Major fears they have about caring for a baby. Disappointments, unresolved losses, as they affect the preparation for a baby or the care of a newborn and the early developing relationship. It's amazing how much can happen if the infant mental health practitioner invites the parent to talk and listens. The sharing of stories is the truly the fabric of infant mental health. In sharing those stories, the painful ones and the pleasurable ones, you begin to relieve the parent's anxiety about entering into their relationship with their baby or their young child. Reflective supervision is the fifth cornerstone, and it ensures that the specialist who's working with families can really share thoughts and feelings that are awakened when they hear intensely emotional stories, perhaps about abuse and neglect, or they witness a relationship that is so difficult between a baby struggling to interact with a parent and a parent who simply cannot. Reflective supervision is essential for effective services. So in sum, the integration of these components really define the whole of infant mental health. There are lots of strategies that are particular to this approach, and I can just suggest a few of them. We surely have to understand and respect the importance of relationship as the primary instrument for growth and change. That means you put that relationship front and center, that you don't just work with the baby and you don't just work with the parent. You meet with them together throughout the period of service to the family. You invite the parent to watch and wonder about their baby's growth. You offer anticipatory guidance that's very specific to this little child. You alert the parent to the infant's abilities and also needs. And you help the parent, father or mother, to find pleasure in the relationship with their very young child. You create opportunities for interaction and exchange when you are with the family. You allow the parent to take the lead, set the agenda, let you know what they want to talk about, what's on their mind. You identify and enhance their ability to respond positively to the baby. You marvel at what they are able to do. You wonder about the infant's experience in the moment. And you wonder about the parent's experience too, what their feeling related to assuming this role of care. You encourage parents to share stories with you and respond with empathy. You allow core relational conflicts and emotions to be expressed. That can sometimes be hard. 
It means you hold the tears, you hold the anger, and you allow that to be right with you, beside you. It's not always easy. You attend and respond to the parental histories of abandonment, early separation, unresolved loss, death of a parent, removal of a child. Those very difficult experiences have a way of affecting the parent's capacity to enter into a new relationship with the baby. And as I said earlier, you may have to collaborate with others. And you may certainly use the supervisory relationship to guide and support the infant mental health practice. Bottom line, and this will sound so simple, you need to remain open and curious and self-reflective. Those are hallmarks of infant mental health service. Although a particular program may vary from the original infant mental health home visiting model, as Freiburg described it, the general service goals really remain the same. To promote and support the growth of a trusting relationship between a baby and caregiver. To promote and support the uniqueness of each and every child within the context of that relationship. To promote and support sensitive caregiving and appropriate responses to babies. Those are really important goals. It's the shared attention to all, everybody in the family in the early developing attachment relationship that makes these services so unique. It requires a shift from your original training, often. But it's important to the process and provides the impetus for the work to take place. What about the baby is a question that the specialist holds in mind throughout the course of intervention or treatment with the family. Well, what about the parent? And what about their relationship? Those questions hold equal weight. So if we begin with the baby, we quickly understand that the infant provides a focus for inquiry, guidance, and learning. Questions about the infant or toddler's development, his or her behavior, and capacity for relationship guide the infant specialist too. They direct the specialist's attention to the baby and help the infant mental health specialist to keep the toddler in mind. Questions may vary depending on the age and developmental status. How old is the baby? How sturdy or vulnerable does he appear to be? Is he able to express his wants or needs clearly when he's hungry or when he's wet or he's tired or uncomfortable or upset? Does he seek and accept comfort from his mother or father when he's upset or she's upset? Does he initiate a playful interaction and engage people around him? Understanding that the infant or toddler is a partner in the work, the infant mental health specialist learns to look at the interaction between parent and child and wonders what she sees. Does the infant look intently, smile warmly, vocalize, use the parent as a source of comfort or calm? And does the parent initiate or respond to the baby or toddler's overtures? Does the infant appear comfortable, secure, safe in the parent's presence? Does the parent provide a trusting relationship for the toddler, a secure base from which to explore and to which to return? Questions like these provide a framework in which the infant mental health specialist wonders just what it's like for this very young child to be cared for by a particular parent or both parents, and also what it feels like to be the parent. A picture of the infant or toddler's emotional capacities, as well as the parent's caregiving abilities, begins to emerge through careful observation and listening. This leads to the shared understanding 
of both the vulnerabilities and the strengths of parent and child. In summary, is Donald Winnicott, a very important pediatrician and psychiatrist noted many years ago, there's no such thing as a baby alone, only a baby and someone caring for the baby. So it's our task within infant mental health to place the infant or toddler in relationship with his parents or caregivers, at least one, and pay attention to all of them. Who is the infant or toddler? Who's the parent? What's going well between them? What's making the caregiving difficult? What's the nature of their early developing relationship? These questions provide a scaffold for effective infant mental health practice and better assure that each baby and each parent might experience the gift of love. <laughs>